Hello, my name is Keshwani. It's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 132 and today is our day number 26. On day 25, yesterday's clip, if you have not watched it, make sure that you go and watch it. On day number 25 in yesterday's clip, uh, we, talked about, uh, uh, we talked about what you see on page number 129. On page 129, they describe the use of the calculator. Unlike the old GRE, in the new GRE, in the so-called revised GRE, they do allow you the use of the calculator. Only the calculator that, that, that they provide you themselves on the screen. And here it is, it's reproduced here. What I was trying to explain yesterday, what I was trying to make you understand yesterday are two things. First of all, try to keep the use of the calculator as, as, uh, as little as possible. Minimize the use of the calculator. And secondly, even when you are using the calculator, try not to mess with these memory keys. You see the memory keys there on the top there. They give you the cancellation keys there. They give you the parentheses. Don't try to do the whole bloody thing in one shot. The way they explain everything in the example that they give you and the way they explain everything is that they try to do the entire problem in one step, in one shot. That's it. There is no reason why you should have to do that. Take your time and do it step by step. And better yet, and better yet, Try, to not, try not to use that calculator at all unless you absolutely have to. For example, in the first one here, they are asking us to convert 6 miles per hour into feet per second. And they go on to explain to us that 1 mile equals 1 mile equals 5,280 feet. 5,000 280 feet. Let's see what happens. 6 miles per hour, which is same as 6 times 5,280 feet per hour. Per hour is same as 60 times 60 seconds, because there are 60 minutes in an hour, and each, each minute has 60 seconds, 60 times 60. So if you were to take this, uh, 60, this amount, 6 times 5,280 and divide it by 60 times 60, there you go, that's your answer. This is how many feet we are going each second. All you have to do is figure this out. And if at that point you want to pick up the calculator and do it out of the calculator, that's fine. But I'm going to show you actually that even this part actually doesn't require a calculator. Let's do it here. Let's do it here. Six times. Because what you have to understand is that these people who are giving you the exam, they're not insane. They're not unreasonable. They give you numbers in such a way that a reasonable person, if, if he or she wanted to, could solve this problem without a calculator in most cases. Notice I said most cases, I did not say all cases. I would have said all cases back in the old days, in the old GRE, the book that I'm holding in my hand here, the 10th edition, is the old GRE. In the old GRE, the calculators were not, calculators were not allowed at all. And therefore, all the questions were designed in such a way that they could be done manually, by hand. Nowadays, because the calculator is allowed, sometimes, once in a while, if you wish to reach for the calculator because it's giving you too much trouble, if it's taking too much time, then it's okay. This is up to you. But it, you, I'll show it to you in a second that even this something that looks complicated, but it's actually not. Divide top and bottom. Divide top and bottom by 10, that takes out this six, the zeros. Divide the top and bottom by 6, that takes out this 6. Now let's find out how many sixes in 52, 528. Like I said before, it may look horrible, but it's not. Let's see what happens. So we have, we have 52 here. How many sixes in 52? You have to know your tables. There are some things, there are some basic things that you have to know. Asking somebody, requiring somebody to know their tables one through ten 
is not what I consider asking too much. You must know your tables 1 through 10. I know that 8, 6 are 48. 8, 6 are 48. So there you go. 48. There are 8 sixes. And that's 48. Once you take away once you take away 48 from 52, we are left with 4. What happens to that 4? That 4 goes and joins this guy. And guess what happens? It becomes 48 again. So voila. There you go. This goes out and there are 8 sixes in 48 again. And that takes care of this thing. We have taken out this 6 because we have divided the, we have just divided 528 by 6. One more time I'm gonna do it. One more time I'm gonna do it. 8, 6 are 48. And the remaining 4 goes and joins this guy, becomes 48 again, and you get another 8, and that takes out the 6. That's it, we're done. And here, don't forget, we have a 0 here. We have a 0 here, which is same as here, 10 here. So we basically left with 88 divided by 10. And of course, I don't need a bloody calculator to figure that out. Answer is 8.8. .8. Answer is 8.8 .8 feet per second. That's all. Let's do one more, shall we? The next one. Let's see what the next one says. A fundraising event collects 40, 43 from a fundraising event collects from 43 people $60 each. So we have 43 people. Each of them gave $60. 43 people gave $60 each. Let's find out what that is. Let's find out what that is right here. Yes. I'm not going to reach for the calculator. I just don't like it. I'm just going to do it manually. I, I get more satisfaction out of it than knowing that I'm doing. I'm on the right path. Because if I press the wrong key, the calculator does not usually scream at me uh, to tell me that I've just made a mistake. Just do it out. This zero comes out. Six threes are eighteen. Carry one. Four four six are twenty four. Plus one is twenty five. There you go. That's your twenty five eighty. It took only a few seconds. It probably took me fewer seconds than it would have taken me had I reached for the calculator. Because you have to slow down, you have to break the, your train of thought, it, it breaks the momentum. I don't like that. Twenty-one people gave eighty dollars each. Again, it's a twenty-one people who gave eighty dollars each, but you have to learn how to chop it up. Don't look at twenty-one as twenty-one, look at twenty-one as ten, ten, and one. 10 80s, 10 80s are 800. We have another 10 80s which are 800 again. And then have, we have one more 80s. 800 plus 800 is 1600. 1600 plus 80 is 1680. Of course in the exam I wouldn't have done it out. I'm just doing it for your sake. 16 people gave hundred dollars each. Well that's very easy. If 16 people give hundred dollars each, that's sixteen hundred dollars. Let's add them up. That's zero. Eight plus eight is sixteen. Carry one. That's a zero, not a six. That's a zero. That's a six, six, six. So there are three sixes. That's eighteen. Carry one. Two plus one is three, four, five. Fifty-two. Or uh, fifty-eight. Sixty. Over. Over what? Let's find out how many people were together. As I explained to you before, these people are not reasonable, they are quite reasonable people, they are not insane. Even if the numbers look a little bit difficult, in most cases, they are not as bad as they first appear to be. That's what I'm trying to convince you. 3 plus 1 is 6, 6 plus, uh, 3 plus 3 plus 1 is uh, 4, 4 plus 6 is 10, that's 0. Carry 1, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there are apparently 80 people. So now, we are going to divide. 5,860 by 80 manually. Yes, manually. Listen to me. Pay attention. Divide top and bottom by 0. That takes care of this 8. How many 8 in a 58? Well, I know that 8, 6, 8, 6 are 48. 8, 6 are 48. If I were to add one more add to 48, uh, if I were to add one more 8, if I were to add one more 8, to 48. I know 48 plus 10 is 58, so it's 56. So that must be 
or we, we're counting we're counting the eights, not the sixes. We're counting the eights. Eight, six are forty-eight. Or, or better yet, six eights are forty-eight. Let's not talk about eight six, let's talk about six eight. Six eights are forty-eight. Now we have seven eights. Because we just added one more eight to it. So that's the seven. And that gives you 56. Okay, keep listening. 56. The remaining two goes. The remaining two goes and joins this guy. Becomes 26. How many eights in a 26? I know that three eights. Three eights are 24. This, this thing is dying. It's annoying the hell out of me. Three eights are 24. So, cross this out. And that gives you 3. But that's only 24. We have a 26 here. This 2 came from here, became 26. 26, we just took care of 24. So that gives us the remainder of 2. Let's see what that boils down to. Okay, this is where the tricky part comes into it. This is from the previous uh, problem, so I'm going to erase it so it doesn't cause any confusion. So we have 73 remainder 2. 73 remainder 2 is same as is same as 73 and 2 8 because we're dividing it by 8 so remainder 2 is same as 2 8 which of course is same as 73 and a quarter that's it that's how many dollars 73 and a quarter everybody on average gave 73 dollars and a quarter which of course is same as 73 dollars and 25 cents that's it we're done that's it since we cannot since we cannot punch in our answer like that, we have to do 73.25. Let's, let's see how to put the come. There we go. 73.25 is the answer. That's what it is. I'm not suggesting that you do this thing in the real exam. Uh, uh, if you feel that you'll be taking a chance or you're taking a gamble and you say it's probably too much of a risk that you don't want to do. What I'm suggesting is that when you're preparing yourself for practice, at least at that point, try to do as much problem, as, as much work rather, by hand. Do not use the calculator. Try not to use it at all and see what happens. Once in a blue moon, if you have to reach for it, for example, for example, on day number 23, I believe it was. Let me give you a simple example. I remember it was day 23 because I remember exactly where, where it was because it does not happen very often where I have to reach for the calculator during the exam. Uh, it may sound uh, pretty uh, cocky, but I'm just telling you what it is. On, page, on day number 23, we were doing a problem, and if you, don't, if you have not watched day 23, go ahead and watch it and you'll see what I mean. And day 23, we were doing the problem, and at the end, this was the answer. 10,000 divided by 92. 10,000 divided by 92, of course, in something like this. Of course, in something like this, it will be foolish to insist that you're going to do it manually, because it can be done. But because it's going to take you forever and ever, it will take too much time. It will take an inordinate amount of time to do it by hand. So in something like this, it's okay to reach for the calculator and do it out. I just used this word, one word here. And if it turns out that I covered it in my vocabulary videos, then I'll tell you which page number, which day it was, and perhaps you might be interested in learning it. I'm looking at my list of the words here that I have covered so far. It's not there. The word that I just used was inordinate amount of time. Inordinate means unreasonable, excessive, above and beyond what is considered normal. So to try to do something like this manually will take inordinate amount of time. So something like this, of course, I would reach for the calculator. But something like this is too simple. It's just 73 and a quarter, 73.25. Just punch it in. That's all. All right. I will see you tomorrow on day number on day number 27, and the next problem that appears. I'm flipping the pages here. Oh yes, we're going to be on page number 145, and we're going to start doing all the problems one after the other in all the set. That's the set number five, and I think it goes up to set number four or five. But that's what it is. We're going to start doing all the sets. And I think towards the end they give you some questions regarding the graphs, the, the, the data analysis as they like to call it. We're going to do all of them uh, gradually, one by one, and we'll get there. I will see you on day number 27. All right? Thanks. Bye.